Hi, Nancy Burt Priest here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Here's my new email. Um, well, about a month old. Uh, my website, that's important because you can see all sorts of new things. The online exclusives are there. November host code. If you haven't joined my Facebook business page, do that. I give um, giveaways every other week, I think. It's been that way, and I continue that. And, of course, my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. So what are we going to do today? We are casing the catalog. What does that mean? We're going to actually make the ornament you saw from the mini catalog on page, here it is, on page 17 in the mini catalog, we are actually making this ornament. I watched Sarah Douglas on her Facebook page and she made it and it's so easy. Um, I'm actually going to be doing this um, for a holiday event I'm having this week. So I wanted to show you how to make it too because it's really fun. So I'll tell you all the things you need. You need a 20 inch piece of, oh, don't put a knot in it, of the um, trim. It's in the annual catalog. It's called Simply Elegant Trim and you need 20 inches. You need a four inch, you could do three inch too. I'm using four inch. Um, these are macrame hoops. I got them from Amazon. Don't we get everything from Amazon? I got them in gold from Amazon. We are using some of that beautiful paper from that suite. This is the specialty paper, and I have to look it up because I can never remember the name. Shining Brightly Specialty Paper. Oh, it's just lovely. And we're also going to use some of this Knight of Navy Gold and Navy Glittered Ribbon. What else? Glue dots. Very vanilla cardstock. And I think that's all. So let's start. I'm going to put this to the side for now. And we're going to start. I did not do it exactly the way they did in the catalog. They use the deckled circle dies. I use the largest stylish shapes dies. And I cut out three. They did two. I'm doing three. One for the front and one for the back. Because I don't like the back to just be plain cardstock. I wanted it to have a pretty design on it. So I have that already done. If you're coming um, this Saturday, you're going to be lucky because I already have it, um, those all cut out for you. So I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to take it off with my finger and I'm going to kind of smoosh it up. That's an official name. And I am going to line, see how I've got it lined up on my grid paper. This is the top where the little part meets there. And I'm going to put this right at the bottom. So I know I'm getting this right in the middle. And I got it all as small as I can get it. Um, I'm going to put my Simply Elegant trim in half. If it's not 100% in half, that's totally okay. And I'm going to wrap it around. Now let's see how finger-like I can get on camera because it's hard to do some of these things on camera. But let's see if I can do it. Okay, I'm going to have that go like that. So I'm just kind of, it, it, the, basically what happens is I'm pushing the glue dot in so it doesn't show very much because it's very hard. If you don't, I mean, you don't have to use a glue dot, but for me, it just holds it. If you don't, oh boy, it, it goes all over the place. If you ask me. Now I'm going to bring the rest of the gold braid, let's say that three times, try to get it as straight as I can, and I'm going to tie that once, bring it as tight as I can. Oops, I forgot to tell you we're supposed to put another glue dot, because once again, these are mainly to just help hold the ribbon while we're tying. And so you notice I'm making it, I don't know if you can see that, I'm making it kind of small. 
And then I'm going to tie this once. Let me see if I can get the parts in my hand and not be all thumbs. Tie it once. And let's make sure I get it in the middle here. There we go. It's moving all over the place. Do you see that? Tie it once. And I'm going to secure it again with another knot going the other way. Okay. So I've got, and I just keep pushing that glue dot so it's kind of under. Same thing with this one. Now, what you could do, and I didn't try it on the other one. Let's try it on this one. What I could do is take that glue dot right off because now that I've got it tied, I don't need it anymore. And I can just, there's a little bit of glue register residue take that off okay so I have just a little bit of glue dot left could you use a half a glue dot sure however you choose to do it I just keep doing it with my my thumbs okay now I'm going to make a knot out of this what I'm going to do is put it together pull it or a through well let's say make it like a little loop and pull it through. It's not incredibly difficult. See how I did that? And I can press it up a little bit so it will hang on the tree. Now, if I don't like that that long, I can just trim it off. Okay, so that is probably one of the hardest parts. We'll see. Now, what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be my front. This is a little bit different pattern than my other one because I wanted to save, I like this pattern the best, and I saved it for all my um, stamper people. See this one? I might take that glue dot right off there too. That one is kind of covered up, but this one is not. Um, so I'm going to slide this behind. Once again, I'm gonna come back to the middle that dark line and I'm putting that right behind. Now I need my dimensionals and get two at a time if you can. You're going to put the first one right here holding that down. Then I'm going to twist, see if I can get it straight, twist, see how I'm twisting this bottom just a little. So I got it, it's not an incredible twist, just a little bit, and I'm putting a glue dot down to hold it. That will mean that when it's up, it's not gonna be twirling around all the time. That kind of holds it. Now that doesn't look completely even to me, does it to you? Now the beautiful thing is if, if you make a little boo-boo and you pick that up, it's not gonna show because that part is gonna be covered. I love that. So let's do it again. Doesn't look completely centered to me. All right, now it looks a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to twist it, twist the bottom just a little bit, and put a glue dot to secure it. Then I would put a ton of glue dots. There is no right or wrong how many you put. I'm going to have lots of glue dots at my event. You go ahead and put a ton of glue dots on there. You'll be happier if you did, trust me, because it'll hold. Now, you don't want it super close to the edge because it might show. So nobody wants to see your glue dots, right? Okay, moving that up, moving my extra stuff, take the glue dots off. Um, it's so funny, I don't know about you, but you know, where is the weirdest places you found dimensional papers. I found them in my bed. I found them on my clothes all over. Found them on the carpeting. I've got, found them in the dining room. Found them in the living room. Found them in the kitchen. Um, dimensional papers are everywhere and I'm totally okay with that. And luckily so is my husband. Um, so, you know, it's just goofy. Um, okay. I've got that done. Now I'm going to very carefully Put this on here so it is covering up the off-white and you've got the first part 
I have chosen to not just have a plain back. I thought that was kind of boring. So, oh, come on. Well, that one is not going to work. Let's see if I got this one. There we go. I'm just going to run. You can have any kind of adhesive, but I'm just going to run a little bit of green glue. And very carefully put the back down. And remember, you can slide with green glue a little bit. Okay? So that's the first part of our um, ornament. And you notice, like, this one's up a little higher than that one. Every time I make it, it might be a smidge different, and I'm okay with that. Um, so now the next thing is you're going to stamp some stars and I'm going to show you how I did it. And I have a little diagram for people coming to my event. I stamped them vertically and then I'm going to cut this out and I'll show you. I'm going to run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine with the dies. This is from that same, um, suite of products, which is just beautiful. And I'm going to run it through. And you notice when I stamped them, I left a little bit of room in between so you can fit the dies. Because if you can't fit the dies, you can't cut out the stars. Um, so now we've got the stars. And I am going to show you what I'm going to do next. I'm moving this off camera for just a quick minute. And I am bringing in my paper trimmer. Remember, park the dark. I am going to line this up, yep, on the back side. And I'm just trying to get this in that track. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect, just so those two ends are in the track. And I'm gonna score it. I tried just folding these with my fingers. And I was not as successful as Sarah Douglas, who of course is the CEO. Um, so she was a little more successful than I was. So I decided that I was going to score my three stars on the back. Because number one, the score line won't show as much. And it'll also help you when you're folding them. Oops, don't do that. If you do that, just get it back together. Maybe try it on the other side. Be careful. It's best going from top down, and I think I just did it the other way. So now we know why we don't want to do that. Okay. Now, <coughs> we are going to take them. And we are going to fold them right on that line. And it's, I think it's easier if you score it. Now, if they're not exactly perfect, you can use your fingers to make them a little bit closer. But it is a lot easier to have a score line to start with. That's just my own personal take. If you would prefer to just start doing with your fingers and folding them in half, there is no wrong or right. You certainly can. So let me do that. Okay, next. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's uh, allergy season. I am going to add a little bit. And I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold this part. So I'm going to kind of hold it down. and get it as close as I can. <coughs> you notice I'm pinching the ends. Pinch, 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 pinch. That really helps. It may not be perfect, but it will help. Then I'm gonna put a little bit more glue here. We're basically making it a dimensional, which is kind of cool. I mean, you want the star to be dimensional. This is a really neat ornament. And it's not hard to do, which I really love. Okay. Put that down. Once again, 
pinch, 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 pinch. Hold for a second, pinch, 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 especially on the ends. You'll be happy if you pinch the ends. First time I made it, I didn't, and I wasn't happy that I didn't pinch the ends. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of glue again, and I'm gonna glue it to the ornament. It, like I say, it's not hard, maybe a little fussy, but it's holiday. You know, we want to make something special. And then I'm going to try to line it up right on the line where I have the cord at the top and the bottom. Hold it for a second. And we're almost done. Now we have our six inch ribbon that we're gonna tie around the top. And I'm gonna push it down a little bit. And you can of course trim it to the length of your choice, which I always do because, you know, sometimes when you're like giving somebody ribbon, it may not be as neat as you'd like it to be. And I will trim it. And look at your beautiful ornament. Isn't that a fun ornament to make for people? I know that if somebody gave me that, I would be thrilled. So I hope you give a try. Um, if you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. Please reach out. And um, or you can order on my website and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.